Good afternoon, gang. This may be true for you and may not be true, but I know a lot of people that are disenfranchised and more or less disgusted with politics. The most common gripe I hear is that government is corrupt. There's a mutually beneficial relationship between special interest or for political action they can afford to and politicians who are willing to be flexible in regard to their principles for the right fee. So money in politics is a huge problem. And corruption is a very common complaint. And I can see how people would get discouraged, let's say, from participating in the electoral process, in the, in the process of government and holding government servants accountable. And so it, it makes me discouraged in the same way to see what is likely to become the greatest corruption scandal in American history being brushed aside by the media, by Hollywood, by half of the House of Representatives, by members of the Senate, by governors and mayors and councilmen and pundits. What happened during Obama's presidency was nothing short of scandalous. To give a few examples off the top of my head, the CIA was running guns in it. Those guns were found to have resulted in the deaths of American citizens. Operation Fast and Furious. Barack Obama was also overseeing the gun running, cocaine running, and human trafficking that comprised Operation Cassandra, or Project Cassandra, whereby Hezbollah was being funded with American tax dollars. This is a terrorist organization that we were funding directly, you and I. If you're a taxpayer, you were funding terrorism. Barack Obama oversaw the weaponization of the IRS against nonprofit groups that didn't align with his political philosophies. Conservative groups were targeted and audited and refused 501c3 status on the basis of their political leaning. This is being fleshed out now. The, the uh, IRS was just ordered to repay somewhere in the, the range of uh, $3.5 billion, if I'm not making that number up. But this settlement is, has just arrived, effectively. So it's, it's not under dispute whether the IRS was used as a political weapon. It factually was, and the settlements are being paid out as we speak. The FBI and the CIA colluded with a foreign government, with intelligence agencies from a foreign government, to try and fix an election. When the president talks about Spygate and the idea that the CIA had become corrupt, that the FBI had become corrupt... He's, he's not lying, but you have to understand he's not talking about field agents. He's not talking about people that are conducting the investigations for the FBI and CIA. Like any group that we, we talk about, there are exceptions to the rule. And the exception seems to have been the people at the top of those agencies. And so using a dossier that was compiled by a foreign intelligence officer... They got warrants from a secret court to spy on the Trump campaign and leak information to the media and provide daily updates to Barack Obama. I haven't seen yet the direct connection between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton for the sharing of that intelligence, but I suspect that'll shake out. 
So the election was, in fact, rigged. And I think that's the primary reason behind this Russia narrative, the idea that Russia hacked the election, that somehow with a couple thousand dollars worth of Facebook ads, they were able to throw an election the opposite way. That's fantasy. And it's projection. When you know what you've done, you accuse someone else of doing it. You see children do this. It's projection. This is basic psychology. To go on television and say that Russia was responsible for interference in our elections and that foreign interference in our elections is the greatest threat to this republic that the world has ever seen. While you yourself have colluded with a foreign government to try and fix the election is preposterous. What, what do you mean? So that's, that's just a handful of high profile scandals involving our former president, Barack Hussein Obama. And yet, though we're all disgusted with the corruption that is endemic in government and in politics, we're unwilling to look at it because it was attached to someone we liked. The media convinced us that he was a good guy while he sold America to Iran, while he sold American uranium to Russians while he ran drugs and guns across the border with the CIA. We allowed all of this to happen for our tax dollars to fund a terrorist organization, for our tax dollars to fund an IRS to target nonprofit corporations so that they couldn't participate in democracy. We weaponized these intelligence agencies against ourselves. And we see this coming out in real time, this investigation that's being run by Congress and by John Huber from Utah simultaneously. But what is the media talking about? The same thing they were talking about two years ago, that Russia hacked the election and that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians to fix the election. You can see by now that this is propaganda. This is obfuscation. This is projection because the evidence suggests that the opposite is true, that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and our intelligence agencies colluded with foreign governments to try and fix the election. What better way to obfuscate that than to say the reverse about your opponent, about your opponent, excuse me. We're finally seeing Congress take action against corruption and this mockingbird media has convinced us to oppose it, to say, no, 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 there's no corruption right now. That corruption ended with Bush. There was no corruption from 2008 to 2016. And if there was, it was somehow Bush's fault. That gap, 2008 to 2016, Christ was in office. And nothing is going to change my mind about that. So we all can voice legitimate concerns about corruption in government and corruption in politics. But we have to voice those same concerns and go where the evidence leads us, even when it's linked to someone we were deceived by. If you voted for Barack Obama, is it your fault he was corrupt? Absolutely not. But are you responsible for not changing your views when corrupt? when confronted with evidence that contradicts them? Do you double down on what you already believe or do you accept that new information and change your perspective? This is what people are talking about when they're talking about waking up because this Project Mockingbird media apparatus does not exist to inform you. It exists to do exactly what it's doing. When we are faced with the greatest corruption scandal since Watergate and likely bigger, we're talking about racism. We're talking about sexism and, and the gender pay gap. And we're talking about all this divisive bullshit when in reality, it is the state versus you. The media doesn't want you to realize that because the media is an extension of the state. It is the propaganda arm of the US government. 
And if you want that corruption to subside, if you want something to change, you need to get behind the people that are going after these corrupt individuals, even if those individuals were on your team. I'm happy to see Donald Trump behind bars if he's committed a crime. If Robert Mueller had discovered something that he could pin on Donald Trump over the last two years of investigation, do you not think it would be all over the news immediately? Impeachment proceedings immediately. Because there are so many people on both sides of the House that their money faucets got turned off when Donald Trump was elected. These are people who call themselves Republican, but are not in fact Republican. They're statists. A statist is someone who wants power to be retained in government so that they can use that power to bring about the things that they want to see. They can continue to benefit themselves. They can continue to scratch the back of special interests that donate to their campaigns. They can continue to use your money to wage wars around the world. This is how it works. And we're being manipulated into believing that it wasn't happening during that gap. And we need to focus on something that is fully unsubstantiated, salacious and unverified. A narrative that has been fed to us to distract us from what's really happening. Think about it. Look at, look at, what, look at what Hillary Clinton did in Haiti. Look at, there were five houses built with $90 billion. How is that possible? Why is it that her brother was awarded gold mining contracts at the same time? Why was Laura Silsby trying to traffic children out of Haiti, gets arrested, and Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State steps in to get the charges dropped? Laura Silsby then changes her name and goes to work for Amber Alerts, issuing warnings for children who are missing. Is this a, a joke? Is this, a, this has to be a simulation because it's too preposterous to be reality. And meanwhile, we're talking about how many Diet Cokes Donald Trump has at lunch. What in the fuck? This media is misleading you. Wake up. Like that pastor said over and over, wake up, wake up, wake up. We'll see you guys. Have a good one.